Oh, it's all a bit weird, this. Actors, despite what you may believe about some of them, Nick Cage, are people, and people die. I'm sorry if I'm the first person to break that to you. In the age of decade-spanning movie franchises, however, film studios don't like how popular death has become recently, and so they keep their actors around. Sort of. CGI reanimation divides opinions, and while sometimes it's fairly convincing, we're pretending they're all distracting horrors for the purpose of this list. I'm Ben from Wad Culture, and here are eight disturbing times actors were brought back from the dead by CGI. Number 8. Marlon Brando. Superman Returns. When The Man of Steel returned to cinemas in 2006, so did the late, great Marlon Brando. It certainly helped proceedings when director Bryan Singer decided to bring him back that the Godfather star had appeared as Jor-El in the previous Superman films decades earlier, allowing the creative team to harvest some of the footage as a starting point. The rest of the resurrection process was down to CGI, and since his likeness isn't exactly in sharp focus in the Fortress of Solitude, the results are passable. Number 7. Philip Seymour Hoffman. The Hunger Games. Digital resurrection really comes into its own during the sad instances where an actor passes away in the middle of shooting, and this was the scenario faced by The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2 when Philip Seymour Hoffman died suddenly during production. Director Francis Lawrence used existing footage to disguise the actor's absence in the remaining scenes, and it's largely seamless. Lawrence also altered the script to change a key scene featuring Hoffman. The dialogue he would have spoken in person was transferred to a letter, instead read aloud by Woody Harrelson's character in an alternative version of the sequence. Number 6. Oliver Reed Gladiator. Ridley Scott's FX team on Gladiator had their work cut out for them. Not only did they have ancient Rome to recreate, they also had to recreate the late Oliver Reed's face from scratch. Reed suffered a fatal heart attack while in the middle of shooting key scenes, but his absence wasn't felt as heavily as it might have thanks to a combination of rewrites, body doubles, and CGI. Now, CGI in 2000 wasn't what it is today, but when you have $3.2 million to splurge on a single effect, it's amazing what you can achieve. Plus, dimming the lights in Reed's most substantial remaining scene also helped. The star's resurrection was an impressive feat in its day, but skillful directing and script rewrites were just as important to compensate for his absence. Number 5. Paul Walker Fast and Furious 7 Paul Walker was tragically killed in a traffic collision in the middle of filming Fast and the Furious 7, but his character Brian O'Connor did not die with him. His remaining scenes were completed with some VFX wizardry. It took approximately 350 additional shots to keep Walker on screen, but CGI was only required in the facial region since the actor's siblings, Caleb and Cody Poole's body double duty, sported similar builds. You can see the results of the resurrection in all of their bittersweet glory in the final scene where Brian and Vin Diesel's Dominic Toretto go their separate ways. And it looks, it looks a little bit weird. Number 4. Peter Cushing – Rogue One You shouldn't outstay your welcome. Peter Cushing's Grand Moff Tarkin was as essential to Rogue One's story as Darth Vader and the Death Star, so Disney's creative team and director Gareth Edwards had to work out a way to bring the character back. This was the moment Digital Resurrection reached a frightening new level, as Rogue One was able to recreate the actor's likeness right down to his most subtle mannerisms, facial tics, and expressions. It was impressive, but under close scrutiny, the eye tracking was a tad inhuman, and as already mentioned, he appeared a little too often for the effect to stick. Number 3. Laurence Olivier, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow director Kerry Comran felt Laurence Olivier was the only choice for the movie's villain, and he didn't let the small matter of the actor's death 13 years earlier get in the way of his casting. Oh boy, no! The legendary star's CV gained a posthumous credit when the film's FX team used archival BBC footage and computer effects to resurrect him as the evil hologram Dr. Totenkopf. A younger and more alive actor was then recruited to record some extra dialogue to complete the illusion. Uh, but the film bombed, and it's probably best Paul Lawrence wasn't alive to see it. Number 2. Roy Scheider, Iron Cross The most effective way to use CGI has always been in conjunction with traditional effects, and it was this magical combination that brought Roy Scheider back from the dead to finish what he started on Iron Cross. Makeup artist Louis Lazara created a prosthetic latex mask mimicking the actor's distinctive broken-nosed profile and a layer of CGI filled the cracks. Scheider had just one major scene left to shoot for the Nazi-themed revenge thriller, but the two-time Oscar-nominated star was there in photorealistic spirit. Mm. Oh, just feels a bit wrong, doesn't it? Number 1. Brandon Lee – The Crow When a tragic accident on set cost the star his life, director Alex Proyas turned to body doubles and CGI to add the finishing touches to his gothic classic. 
Several key scenes were filmed after Lee's death, including the sequence where Draven first enters the apartment after digging himself out of his grave. Here, existing footage of the actor walking through a rain-battered alley was cut and pasted into the apartment scene, and rain droplets added to the interior to complete the illusion. Other sequences involved superimposing Lee's face onto a body double, which was done rather convincingly, considering it was 1994, and Facebook didn't exist, and everything measured now is by Facebook. <laughs> The Crow is a great example of a film that was completed tastefully in the wake of an actor's passing, the completed work later being dedicated to both Lee and his fiance. And that's our list. Make sure you subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this, and don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. I'm Ben from What Culture, and thanks for watching.